This is Tamar Yona reporting for Arutshava Israel National Radio. I'm standing here at the Purim Jerusalem Conference in in Jerusalem, of course. Everybody but everybody is here, some to meet and rub shoulders with the rich and famous, and some are here, unfortunately, to try to negotiate away the land of Israel in the name of peace. World leaders and politicians from all over the globe have gathered here, including Israeli locals, to decide the future of Jerusalem. Oh, look, there's Israel's president, Shimon Peres. I want to ask him some questions. Mr. Peres, Mr. Peres, the left wing has been tainted with stories of bribery, of trying to get votes even to pass Oslo. One accusation going as far as bribing a Knesset member named Goldfarb in the Knesset in order to get his vote to tip the scales uh, to get Oslo passed through. Tell me, uh, what did you promise him in order to get his vote? You got a custom continental. You got a El Dorado too. Hmm, I even heard that you got him a Mitsubishi. Well, it seems like you won't let anything get in your way as you pursue this vision of a new Middle East. Tell us, how do you perceive the peace process? But Mr. Perez, that could take years, and you're an older man in your 80s. I wanna live uh, one last question, please. Tell us, what is it that drives you? What is your goal? Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, oh, look, there's a Prime Minister Ehud Olmert. Uh, Mr. Olmert, Mr. Olmert, uh, we hear you are ready and willing to give up even more land in order to make a Palestinian state. Is there any piece of real estate here in Israel that you would not give up? The Arabs have consistently attacked us even when you've ceded land to them again and again. What do you base your land for peace formula on? Feelings, nothing more than feelings. And yet as you give away real estate in Israel, we hear rumors that perhaps you bought yourself a retirement home in Boca Raton, Florida for when you retire from politics and leave Israel in a shambles. What will you say to us then? Well, that's great. So you're selling out Israel for... Monday, 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 always Sunday in the rich man's world. So now that you've utterly made a mockery of the Prime Minister's office with all these crimes you've been accused of and a rumored purchase of a beautiful home in Boca Raton, Florida, what are your plans now as you leave office, Mr. Olmert? Okay, all right, never mind. Uh, oh, look, there's uh, Minister Chaim Ramon, uh, who was convicted of sexual harassment by French kissing one of his female co-workers. Mr. Ramon. Mr. Ramon, I know you're busy. You seem distracted. I just spoke with the Prime Minister, if that's who you were looking for. Hello, who are you looking for? Uh, okay, never mind. Uh, wait, step away. Step away from me. Oh, yuck. All right, let's find someone else to talk to. Oh, look, there's an Israeli Air Force pilot. I excuse me, uh, Captain. Tell us, what is it like when you're flying up in the air above Gaza? You've been given the order, finally, to target the terrorists who are launching missiles against our population in Sderot. How do you feel as you pull the trigger and make those targeted killings? Another one bites the dust. And another one gone. And another one gone. Another one bites the dust. Hey. Oh, look, in the corner, there's Mahmoud Abbas, our so-called peace partner. Mr. Abbas, how much land really do you want in order to make a lasting peace? <laughs> 
All right, not much to discuss there, I guess. Oh, look, there's Sippy Livni, the head of the Kadima party. Uh, Miss Livni, after all of your efforts to make peace as the foreign minister, the Arabs still don't comply. What are your thoughts? There's nothing you can do that can't be done. You truly believe that you can work something out with the Arabs. So you'll continue pushing this formula of land for peace, even though it hasn't worked. I believe in miracles. Yet you thought that you'd be the next Prime Minister of Israel. It was just my imagination. Run away with me. Well, I need to be running too. Oh look, there's a group of refugees from Gush Katif. Let me ask one of them a question. Uh, hi there. You're still in those caravillas that the government built for you, those paper-thin homes. What would you like to say to the new government of Israel? I need somebody help. And look, here's just the person to help, Moshe Faglin. Mr. Faglin, we know you want to be the Prime Minister and you'll even run next time in the Likud. What's your message to the voters? Honey, I'm still free. Take a chance on me. And if you got elected, what would you tell the Arabs who have settled in Israel and claim this land as their own? We understand that one of your policies is to annex Judea and Samaria. That's a very bold step. How far would you like to see the borders of Israel extend to? Well, thank you very much for your answers. Oh, uh, there is uh, a Victor Lieberman. Uh, Mr. Lieberman, uh, what does it feel like to have these constant police investigations and interrogations against you? How would you describe it as being like? Oh, look, there's one of your interrogators now. Um, Mr. Interrogator. How do you get information from, let's say, terrorists that you uh, interview? Twist and shout, twist and shout. Are there any other methods you use? Well, I hit him hard right between the eyes. And uh, what condition do you often leave them in? Knock, 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 heaven's door. Oh my, there is the President of the United States, President Barack Hussein Obama. I want to ask him a question. U.S. President Obama, the Israeli people want to know if you are planning to divide Jerusalem. How many pieces do you want to split our country into? Ooh, baby. And after that, what are your real ambitions here in Israel? see over in the corner there some Hamas members and they're speaking with Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Well, what do you terrorists have to say for yourselves? Hey, hey, there's a monkey. Monkeys? Try another description. Give the devil his due. I bet a fiddle of gold against your soul because I think I'm better than you. Yes, that's the problem. They think they're better than the rest of the world. Well, this infidel would like to... I'd like to ask you, what would your life be like if you weren't Muslim? Nothing to kill or die for. Hmm, that would be a bummer for you, wouldn't it? Well, I'd like to ask you, well, last question for you. What do you think about Arut Sheva, Israel National Radio, where we tell the people of the world the truth about you? Baby, you're no good. Well, that's a compliment coming from you. This is Tamar Yona at the Jerusalem Purim Conference, signing out. Wishing you a very